I'm Peter Gregson. I'm a cellist and a composer. It's cool. <laughs> Look at it. No, um, it's uh, so this is my blue electric cello. Um, it's dimensionally the same as my steam cello. Uh, so the, the, the distance between all the notes is the same. So it means I have no good excuse for playing out of tune. <laughs> so it's, it basically feels the same. The difference is, as you can see, it's got five strings. Okay. Um, normal old cellos have four, but I'm lazy. So I got an E string put on top so I can play higher, faster and more easily. It also sounds really cool because it's like a, a guitar E string. So it kind of has this kind of shreddy like sound going on. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's it's quite simple really. As you see, it has no body, so the whole thing is made up of bits. So it comes apart into a little breakable construction kit. Um, so this is the spike and the leg brace, so you can sit comfortably with it. It's all adjustable. And then the fingerboard, um, the bridge here with the five different strings. It's got five different pickups, so each string can go to a different speaker or a different effect or a different whatever. Um, and a chest brace, so that it kind of doesn't go too far. And um, yeah, then you, you know, put the bow on it. And it doesn't have a body, as you can see. It's just like a solid piece of kind of quite pretty wood. Um, so in order for it to make any sound, we have to amplify it. We have to, it's, it's, it is basically a guitar, like an electric guitar for that purpose. Um, it sounds pretty ugly, direct. Like it's it doesn't do anything. There's no resonance or kind of... Um, there are no overtones to pretty up the sound. So you have a lot of control. It means things like harmonics are really pure and really easy to control. Um, the downside is you're not going to make anyone cry just by playing a tune. You have to spend quite a lot of time kind of even sculpting. With the, even with the amplified. Yeah, especially with the amplified, actually, because when it's really quiet, you can really focus on kind of weird, gritty, gnarly stuff. Um, but as soon as it's amplified, it just sounds very close and kind of flat. Uh, so you have to put it into a space and you've got to give it stuff to kind of okay. play with. Well, they're, they're brilliant. So you can do this. Um, like scordatura is the fancy word for just detuning strings. And um, so you can do really great scordatura with it. So with a, an acoustic, a normal cello, they're made of wood and they're just held in place with friction. Um, whereas these, you can change the, the notes and hold them in really weird places and kind of like so we've got a whole load of this on sample library of playing notes and going and going boom <laughs> sort of detuning it because it's it's really controllable and then machine they're mechanical so they just stick stick in one place these are really expensive real cello strings <laughs> right. um and i use these i one of the things i use the electric cello for actually is stretching in my next pair of concert strings okay. um, because then you can the problem with with cello strings is they're very expensive and they don't break very often but if they do one of them break they don't all go and you don't really want to have to replace all of them when you do yeah. um, so I use identical strings here so that if like a, an A string of mine broke pretty recently so I could just take this one off it was already played in and kind of ready to go put it on the, the real cello and it was all all singing all dancing because this doesn't resonate, it, it makes very little difference what the strings are doing. So you can use it either as a stretching ground or a graveyard. Right. <laughs> so I've got a really old one on now, just because because I do. That's a really good question, um, and in, in a good teacherly way. If I tell you the answer, you won't remember, but if you go and look it up... <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um, I know... <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's basically... An, <laughs> <laughs> it's an electric guitar pick. It's a series of PZ pickups. Um, I think people started amplifying acoustic cellos for you know fun, sport, and profit probably in the sixties, seventies. Um, it, it's been a very slow road to to, to writing music for kind of native electric instruments, and there are some people that write better for it than others that really get into this sure. kind of treating it like a unique thing, you know, not saying, well, it's a loud cello, because okay. that's kind of dull and it doesn't really help it. That's an amazing question. <laughs> um, why would an electric cello be synonymous with North Africa? Um, I think, I mean, it, the thing that I've always felt with, with an electric cello and the stuff that you can do with it is it has this kind of 
it's so very nearly like the great thing with a real cello is it's it fits into the kind of human voice range it's very easy to hear the cello as a kind of human voice like as a, a vocal thing um and this obviously fits in the same acoustic same resonance space but it doesn't quite sound real like it it just it goes so far but just stops from being human sounding and it's got this kind of cut off point you know it, it does all the things a normal cello does it sounds does the pitches does all the stuff but then it it does hit this wall of what is that you know and, and i know some of these scores you're talking about it just it's this really haunting kind of color that just just slightly separates from the the orchestra or from the quartet or from whatever and it's not that it's louder than anything else it just stands apart from so it's, let's say the stuff i often end up doing is it's it's for the baddie or it's the you know, it's just the thing that isn't necessarily louder or more dominant in the room. It's just different. <laughs> you know, it does have that kind of slight rasp in there, I suppose, if you if you push it, um, and it doesn't have any of the niceties of a resonant bodied instrument. But I I like to think about it as a almost real voice. It's not quite there. You know, it just doesn't quite have the kind of human quality to it. The difference in playing it from a very functional point of view is largely it has no body, so your muscle memory is very different. Um, if you're playing a real cello, you, you've got little shift guides of, you know, your hand hits the side of the cello first, you know, like, oh, that's, that's where that note is, or that's where an F is, or a C, or an A, or whatever. Um, there aren't too many other differences. I mean, the fifth string does throw things like if you're doing big bar chords, you know, kind of these, your thumb has to go a little bit different, slightly and technical. And the curvature of the strings is but the same? It's pretty similar, it's a little flatter, <laughs> um, but it does come up with some really good benefits. You know, that really the differences are, are good things, you know, so you can get away with a lot more, you can do weird kind of droney double stop things and kind of cool triple stop harmonic tricks and all these sorts of things. So they're all good differences, you know, and I, I wanted my electric cello to, to do that, like otherwise it's just a loud cello and you know it's got to have some kind of difference going on. But really the main difference is when you walk on stage or walk into a studio and sit down with a composer and or a producer or with an audience, you get away with a lot more with this. Like if you walk in with a, a real cello, people want to hear Bach. <laughs> you know, yeah. they do, because it's great. Whereas with this, like, oh God, what do you want to do with that? And it's really you, it kind of throws up all sorts of different questions. Yeah, I think, I mean, what you're kind of getting at is just assuming that the it's electric thing will, will carry any kind of qualitative difference. I mean, they sound horrible. <laughs> you know, okay. it, it doesn't, the, the music that is written for, the, I mean, as a cellist, like, the cello repertoire is amazing, it's huge and expansive. It's written for a really specific instrument, like it's written for a cello that resonates and sounds great. There isn't all that much music written for an electric cello, and anything you play on it has, I in my humble opinion, has to be nuanced to the instrument. The thing I love about this, I love tooling about with, you know, computers and sort of outboard and stuff, is you, you have to think about the sounds you want to create through it. It's, you know, it's an interface rather than a, um, a fully functioning instrument in and of itself. So, you know, you kind of have to think, well, I want this to have a kind of metallic sound. Well, what, what reverb is that going to be? And what, what kind of EQ are we going to do with that? And it's so flat and so... You know, like so flat. Yeah, you can you can do all these things to it, um, but you know, I don't think playing Bach on this helps Bach. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't do anything for anyone. It's just different for the sake of being different. And so, you know, whenever I get called in to do a a cello, like a weird, scary cello thing, with this, I always like to go in and and you spend time, kind of, tooling around with what what they've got in the in the corners and what they've got in the cupboards and where you put the mic. And the, the big revelation. Um, for this, for this library, and for me as a someone who who does this stuff, was miking the instrument, like focusing on the fact that it doesn't sound pretty, and and treating it more like a a thing to blend with, you know, the direct the di of the instrument just sounds really, like, and then you get some microphones on it, and you 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 know you make it, you focus on that stuff and really bring out the the personality of the instrument. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, often the stuff I get called in for, it's a real problem. It's a real shame when it's a show I like or a film I like, because normally it means someone's died in it. <laughs> you know, normally it's in a sad scene. <laughs> yes. And it's the kind of, you know, the death music or the kind of the crash or something. Um, but, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, I remember having a discussion with uh, somebody I was at college with and said, oh, you know, but it's, it's not really like playing Brahms like no you're absolutely right it's not like playing Brahms <laughs> you know um but with my kind of composer hat on it's like it's just basically responding to picture or responding to someone's music and a lot of the far left field contemporary music that I that I do play with my kind of serious cello hammer that stuff you know there's so much kind of um augmented control that you that you have to learn how to control and develop for one side of your life and then you can bring it seamlessly across into another one and mix it up with all this kind of delays and ribbon so you know harmonics or, or, or bowing tricks or whatever it is that you bring to the table you can you know you just augment with knowing how to play with a culture vulture or knowing how to work with a delay those sorts of things yeah well I think when we started talking about what this sample library might do um, yeah, it was very definitely, you know, the, the electric cello as a as a viable instrument. You know, so we made this sort of full, fully featured VI of it, and with all the permutations and all the hits and knocks and scraps and scrapes and things. And what we learned really early on was part of one of the kind of quirks of the instrument is it's not that dynamic. Like it's you can go loud and you can go quiet, but what you can do really well is differentiate between different bow positions because none of the usual problems of um, physics, <laughs> physics don't get in the way. The resonant frequencies of the instrument don't get, you know, they don't get wrong. Big revelation in this was really capturing that kind of the ugliness and the real, like the personality of the instrument, not not me, you know, me and my massive ego. It's really focusing on the the tonal quirks of this instrument and so we, we were ramming microphones right up on it and sort of all the finger noise and all the stuff that you traditionally want to take out. But that's all the stuff that you want to put in. And, you know, that that's where that's where you can kind of bottle the soul of the performer. You know, it's like how your fingers go down on the string and how the bow kind of scrapes and if you hit the bridge, that's kind of a, a thing that happens, you know. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so we were really kind of playing with that. Um, so actually... I thought it was going to be quite good fun and, you know, sit there having a chat, listen to Katy Perry whilst playing along, you know, just because it's all being DI'd. Um, but when we were sitting in your studio and I was saying, oh, listen to this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And there was this kind of general consensus of, yeah, it sounds crap. But the thing that sounds great is that is the stuff right up close, right in the instrument. Yeah. Um, and I think it was Paul kind of sat there with his head here. Mm. <laughs> and it does, it it totally changes the the character of, of it and you know I've been working on a, a film recently where they just it just totally changed the character of it and it went from being this kind of raspy noise in the corner to having a, it just jumped out of the speakers it just sounded amazing um, so we sort of set about thinking well we first of all looked around what you had in your toy cupboard and looked around what Joe had his and what I had in mine and thought well what could we you know what would I normally what would I want to bring if I was making an album? I thought, well, you want some delays, you want some sort of vibey reverbs, you want some of this, you want some of that. Um, and I've recently, like everybody, kind of found a love for analog synths. And the big shortfall of a cello is it's not an analog synth, but it kind of is. Like, you know, it's an analog thing. And you can, if you've had enough of a misspent childhood, you can wrangle it into all sorts of different sounds. So what we spent more time than making the VI, which takes, as you well know, takes a long time to do. Um, we spent all this time thinking, well, how would it sound if we, like, like natural filtering, so different bow positions and kind of bowing tricks and like finding different ways of doing long pizzicatos and kind of like an augmented toolkit of, of different colours that you could play with. Um, I think for me the, the highlight on the album is is this chug, this cello moog thing, um, which is like a super distorted playable cello synth sound <laughs> it's really cool um controlled pitched colegno so as opposed to it just being like this kind of tick, 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 tick sound you can play scales colegno so you can really bring out really quiet it's this focusing on the quiet thing 
you never hear it if you're just hearing a wash of noise. But, you know, when you really sort of basically take a step back and zoom in, you know, and see this thing, it, it just sounds incredible. You get this little kind of definable scale that comes out. Um, and all those little kind of quirks that you, again, traditionally try and take out. And um, Yeah, so kind of just focusing on the on the, the analog nature of it and, and really what it what it does and the quirks of, of a real instrument that you can completely sculpt and completely control the sound of as opposed to having to be in a nice space. Not that this isn't, but you know, you don't need to be in Lindhurst Hall with Neumanns and everything. Like you can just go and, and sort of really kind of get all the texture out of it. Uh, what's next for me? I have an album with music coming out. Uh, in August, which is a lot of, it's again, it's the same kind of idea. It's all on the acoustic cello, but it's what does the cello sound like under your ear? So it's like microphones in weird places and kind of, and it is with analog synths as well, which is fun. Um, I'm working on a couple of films, scary noises. Um, I've just finished scoring a film for Alan Rickman and Kate Winslet uh, called A Little Chaos, which comes out soon, which has no scary cello on it, um, but has a lot of cello on it. Mm. Um, yeah, we're keeping out of trouble at the moment, which is nice. Brilliant. And then this library, of course. Fantastic. Well, thanks for talking to us today. Oh, thanks so. for having me.